G'day. Today we're going to do an unboxing and build of an i7 uh, 12700K. So just a shot of the mining rig still up on the bench. And uh, yeah, other one's under there. Apparently it's only drawing 389 watts. So I definitely think my power meter's broken because I checked the rigs are both running normally drawing about 900 watts, but it's only reporting 494. But anyway, onto the build. A little Scorp Tech. It's my, currently my preferred supplier of parts. First up, we have a i7. So let's get ahead and go ahead and unbox that one. Okay, so we have the 12th gen Intel Core Unlocked 12700K LGA 1700. So, this is going to be my first LGA 1700 build. There's a chip in the back there. I can feel there's no, obviously, no heat sink fan in there. Like every generation, these boxes get smaller and smaller. So, here's one so comparison for a you know, the front of it, it's about the same. Height's different though. Boxes get smaller and smaller each generation. So, yeah. Let's open this up and see what's not in here. Lots of air and processor. Let's slide out. How's that open? There we go. I7 12700K. Very jealous. I wouldn't mind building one of these for myself, but I've still got my 8086K that's chugging along. So. Unless you need to upgrade it, I tend not to upgrade stuff. And sticker, and that is it. Pretty basic sticker. I like the older ones. Anyway, that's that. Add the box to the collection. Done. Okay, next up, 2 terabyte Samsung 970 Evo Plus NVMe. A nice little drive. Unreal performance realized. Five year warranty. Very good. So expecting there to not be much in this packet. Sometimes you get a sticker if you're lucky. And there. Ooh, comes in a oh, little plastic. That's pretty cool. It's got like a lid and everything. Look at that. Keep that as a um, thing to. Oops, this falls out. Gee, not much to them these days. It's smaller than a stick of RAM. <laughs> Alright, so that's that. What else is in here? I feel something underneath. Ah. <sighs> Little booklet. And do we get a sticker for $330 or whatever in the same price this drive was? You get a magician. Download Samsung Magician. Yeah, just a legal disclaimer, installation guide. <laughs> That's literally all there is. Take full advantage of Samsung SSD. It is re recommended to install Samsung Magician. Yes, I'll probably do that. Wow, very bare bones. Uh, 
Yeah, it seems to go on to the days where you get a sticker for everything. Uh, well, not to worry. I usually put the stickers on the back, maybe one on the front. So we'll set that aside. And move on to our next one. Okay, next we have the Infamous D15. I'm not sure. So, uh, hopefully. Yep, cool, this is updated. LGA 1700. Uh, yeah. So, kind of needs no introduction. It's been seen plenty of times before. It's in the box. Look at that, get the accessories kit. It's got a load noise, two load noise adapters, which are useless. A y splitter. Some thermal paste, a screwdriver tool, clip for a second fan, AMD Intel. Second fan. Pretty good fans, these. A little bit overpriced. That's like identical to the one that's on my mining rig. There's that one there. SSO bearing and the heat sink itself. Very well packaged. There we have it. The king of the heat pipe coolers. It's freaking massive. <laughs> yeah, plastic protector on there. How many heat pots? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, nice. Alright, we'll put that aside. Alright, next we have the RAM. It's like a yeah, rip jaws. I usually get Kingston. Never had a Kingston memory module fail. But, uh, this came as part of a deal. So it's like CPU main board memory. You get $50 off. Yeah, nothing too special. Uh, yeah, DDR4 3600 16 gig by 2 so 32 gig of RAM put that aside alright next we have the main board mag z690 tomahawk wi-fi DDR4 let's have a look in the box let's see if I pop that up with something Two little antennas. There's a side. Jeez, this thing's heavy. <laughs> Tell it's got, got a lot of heat sinks on it. Adding to all the weight. Heavy. 
Yeah, look at that. That's thick aluminium. There and there. CPU pump, this fan. Yeah, apparently it's got this. So I had to be wary of this. I noticed this when I was looking at the board. It's got two 8 pin connectors from the power supply for the CPU. So I could have used a double adapter, but best to avoid it. Anything other than mining. It's not bad. M.2 slot under there. <laughs> Reinforced if you call it that. It's with like flimsy metal. Main slot, PCI-1, and another two 16s. So the people I'm building this for want to have two cards in here to mine with on a 1660 Supers. And they also do high-end graphics and video editing and that kind of stuff. So, which is the reason for the lots of memory and a fast processor. A little bit overkill, and I did say you're probably wasting a little bit of money, but you know, at the end of the day, People get what they want, if they've got the money. So yeah, there's the board. What else is in here? Two SATA cables. What's that? Is that a case bed? Yeah, I think it is. And whatever that is. What is that? little metal screw thing with a plastic tab on it I guess we'll find out uh, it looks like a USB drive <laughs> okay and another one of those metal plastic things what is this stickers <laughs> sticker deco so what are you supposed to put that on the main board or something Battery stickers. Huh. Fair enough. Never seen that before. Quick installation guide. Shout out. Share your MSI product experience. A booklet advertising. What's that? This product was created with great passion and we hope you can enjoy it. Sheesh, it's like a rubbery cardboard. I guess that's what you get when you spend lots on a main board. Platinum card. Okay. And the manual. Standard manual. Da -da 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 -da. I'll have a read through that later. So there you have it. The... Uh, I've forgotten what it's called already. MSI Mag Z690 Tomahawk. So all the ports in that yet. Yeah. So we've got a display port, HDMI, bias flash button. Oh, this is one of those boards. <laughs> flash bias goes into that port. I guess that's what that USB drive's got something to do with. And Oh yeah, there's a USB-C, 2.5G. I don't actually have any of those yet. Wi-Fi and the usual audio. So there you have it. Alright, next up we have the Silverstone Declathon Series DA850. 80 plus gold, fully modular power supply. Uh, pretty boring really dual CPU actually that's as those dual 8 pin headers I was talking about earlier that it needs we've got special features high efficiency 24-7 continuous output class leading rail yeah yeah all the typical stuff let's have a look alright first up power cord standard and instruction manual let's have a look what's in the instruction manual
Another look. Troubleshooting. Yeah. Power supply is like the most unexciting component of the computer. But one of the most important is if you don't have clean power, you can have all kinds of gremlins in your system. Got screws. Motherboard, motherboard. We've got one, two, three, four, five PCI Express slash CPU and four SATA Molex. Uh, that's not bad. I reckon the um this one, Fractal Design. That's a 860 watt. That had quite a few. That had enough um PCI Express power connectors for like three video cards with two each, so that's kind of why I picked it because it was pretty cheap, good for mining. Jeez, look at that. Lots of cables. The old Molex, another Molex, and SATA. Probably use that. Uh, actually, we don't, there's no SATA devices in this build, so we don't actually need. SATA, that looks like PCI Express, PCI Express, so we'll need that one, main power cable, we need that one, CPU, one of the CPUs, uh, what's that, SATA, PCI Express, yes, PC, another PCI Express. We only need two, I believe. Yep, two video cards. Two CPU, two PCI Express, one spare. Okay. Alright, put all these back in the box. We don't need those. It's really the power supply. Pretty straightforward. 120 mil fan. Pretty basic looking. Never actually bought a Silverstone power supply before. I used to use Antex traditionally. Um, then I moved on to these Fractal Design because they have a 10 year warranty, platinum rated. Uh, this one looks alright. There's a couple of power supplies I won't touch, namely Seasonic, because uh, back in the early, like 20 years ago, I mean, I know it's 20 years ago now, but 20 years ago they were uh, known to blow up after about 12 months. The caps inside would pop and it would take out the main board. So that's kind of stuck with me for a while, so I tend to stick through those brands that have a bad reputation forever ago. They're probably okay these days, but you know. All right, next we have a box of fans. And here we have a box of fans. Five Arctic. These are pretty cheap. It's like $35 for five fans, just to put in the case. Let's have a look. Volk fans. Oh, that's at 140 mil. I say these things are big. A little funky blade design. <laughs> so apparently these are more static pressure orientated. But um, I couldn't find any ones that were just airflow orientated at a fair price, so I guess they'll do. Pretty straightforward. No RGB, which is the most useless thing to ever grace computers. Cool. So five of those. All right. Last of the components, which is not actually for this build, is my service cost for building this computer. So the friend I'm building it for said, oh, "I want to give you money," and I'm like, oh, "I actually prefer." memory so this is like $99 they were going to give me $100 I said oh, if you 
add a couple sticks of RAM to upgrade my home computer. That, that'll be fine. So yeah, let's have a look at this. So um, in the coming weeks, I'm gonna, when I get time, I'm gonna pull apart my main desktop, clean it all out, redo it, add some more memory, maybe add a new hard drive, I'm hoping. Go from a one to a two terabyte, so make a video going through that. Pretty straightforward. So I've, I picked this because it's the closest to what I've already got in there, which is a DDR4 3200. Same timings. Um, so what's this? Kingston Fury. The one I've already got is Kingston Fury Platinum or something like that. It was like a pr the premium one at the time. It was all they had in stock. Um, so this is, yeah, Kingston Fury Renegade. Any, looks like you don't get a sticker. Well, I might get a sticker. Let's have a look. Oh, years ago, every hardware component came with a sticker. I used to collect... Oh, look at that. You do get a sticker. Kingston Fury. <laughs> cool. So I'll put that all... Put that aside, and that'll be going in my desktop at some point. Yep. There you have it. Alright, and the case I chose for them, or they chose, I suggested it, and they said, yep, is the Thimbletake, which is traditionally a cheap brand. I'm not a huge fan of it. It's a bit of a budget, traditionally budget brand, but I don't know, some of that stuff's okay now. Versa J22TG So the reason they picked this is because they want an SD card reader That goes in a 5.25 inch bay So this is one of a few cases that actually still have that as well as decent airflow still So uh, let's get it out the box Let's get static electricity off these cases. <laughs> Touch my earth strap. If you're wondering, I never wear a earth strap. It's because I've got a strip of metal that runs along my workbench that's connected to earth. And I do have an earth strap thing there. So when I'm about to touch stuff, I either lean against that metal strip, which uh, discharges static, or I just touch it before I touch any components. So yeah, let's get this out. Keyboard scanner. Ta da! Oh, look at that. It's got those removable magnetic filters on there. Not bad. So, what? What is that? I think that might be for lights. Drive bay, filtration. Looks like that's not easily removed, unfortunately stuff is. I think I also saw one underneath which is the strange place to have a removable filter. We got fan in the rear. Pretty standard. Feels unfortunately the metal feels a bit flimsy. They've even rolled the metal along there just to reinforce it. Obviously it's yeah. Anyway. Oh, look at that, oh, the rubber plugs in the ports, I've never seen that before. It's a good idea, I'm actually not a huge fan of these up-facing ports, like, you're just asking for dirt and debris settling, even with the power switch. All the crud gets under it, 
And it's bad enough in the forward facing ones. Anyway, tempered glass. Uh, that's my reflection of my arm. <laughs> Let's get the glass off and have a look. Let's put the camera down. All right, glass in the box. Yeah, so much crap around here lately. I need to tidy all this up. Yeah, let's have a look inside. There's the rear of the dry bay. It's very dark. Let's get a light on. And the rear of the dry bay. It looks like you fit three fans in the front if you don't put anything in that top dry bay. But we'll just be putting two there. So the video cards sitting there. So they'll that's in line with those two fans. And I believe you can put 240 mils in the top, which you'll also be doing. I was just thinking, why would you want the filter? Uh, why would you want the filter there where it's going to be blowing air out through the top? I mean, sure you can have it sucking air in, but that means you're going to have all that area sucking air in, as well as the front. Where's it going to exhaust? You've got 120 mil fan there, not even a 140, and the power supply. Oh, and that little area down there, but that's filtered on the other side, so it's like that's intended for the air to come up as well. Oh, no. That's probably more so for the um, air to get drawn up through the power supply. Huh. Bit of air movement there. The other side panel, there's no ventilation. So I'm not sure what I'll do. Probably worth taking that off to improve airflow, to be honest. Which then makes it look a bit shitty. <laughs> yeah. yeah they, didn't, they didn't think about the airflow too well in this case. Yeah, that's the reason why you generally steer clear of thermal tape. Things like that. So anyway, there we have it. Let's uh, get the main board assembled. All right, main board. Touch the middle. Again, let's get this processor mounted and clip the clip. Does that say remove? Very careful of those pins. Yeah, so there we have it, the old LGA. 1700 socket. Yeah, our processor. Alright, let's get our processor out. Can't quite see that with the light. Oh, there we go. Core i7, 12700. Yeah, the pins look really weird. There's like different size pins or pads. I don't know if you can see that very well. Yeah. Anyway, let's look for some notches. We've got one there, one there. Looks like it sits in here. Drop in. straightforward it's just like the old sockets just stretch slightly <laughs> all right what do you got here do we got dim one two um okay so that's every second one <laughs> one two dim a one dim a two 
first. <laughs> it actually says to fill number two first. No, well, whatever. That's really weird. I'm trying to focus on that. See, it's saying dim A2 and dim B2 first. So I'm assuming that means obviously put the sticks in first, but it's really strange to say that B is first. Yeah, whatever. Not a big deal. However you want to do it, MSI. I usually, traditionally I get ASUS or Gigabyte motherboards, but this is a pretty good deal. It's like $50 off. Scorp Tech. He's uh, currently been my preferred provider for computer parts. Yeah, good prices. And um, obviously, this is not a you know, what do you call it? Not getting kickbacks or anything, but um, out of all the online places I've used recently buying components Scorp Tech seemed to be the better of them yeah the stuff's not I mean, look at this the amount of packaging they used in the box like they packed everything really 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 well so I was quite impressed with that there you go. nothing to it all right now we need to put the hard drive in Traditionally, the biggest, heaviest thing is now the smallest, lightest thing. Yeah, one. Here's a number zero screwdriver. So, I should probably read the manual before I do this. It's pretty straightforward, though. This thing will go up. So, what have you got? Is that four? It says D1, D2, D3, D4. I didn't actually realise it had um four four uh, NVMe slots. That's pretty good. Well, they're never going to be used. <laughs> oh, that's that little thing in that bag I found before. So they give you spare screws. What's it got this plastic notch on it for? Slot one. It's only one, yeah, only takes one on there. And the hard drive. She called it the light drive. It's so light. Alright. Hey, wouldn't I like to put this in my computer right now? This is pr pretty much what I want, but. Cannot afford it, but I'm still watching the hard drive prices go up and up and up and up, so I'm going to have to bite the bullet at some point, I think. There we go. Let's see if we can do this one-handed. Yeah, we shouldn't. There you go. So I don't get what that plastic thing is for. What's the point of that? It's like a plastic tag. Uh, maybe that, maybe that's it. I'll probably find out if I read the manual. Oh yeah, it's like a little plastic lock. <laughs> Fair enough. Not, it's probably not necessary, but all right, that's in. And look at that thermal pad. Yeah, it is thermal pad. Turn it on. That's all right. I'm actually pretty impressed with this. This is—I actually wouldn't mind this hardware for myself, but uh, my 8086K that I bought it four years ago still does everything I want it to do. So I can't kind of can't justify upgrading it. The only thing is, I run a few virtual machines now. 
doing various things, so that's why I'm putting a bit more memory in it. Oh wow, let's just look at this. Look how thick those heat sinks are for the VRM. <laughs> Even that. Damn. That's why it's so heavy, no doubt. Yeah. It's a nice board. So the main reason we chose this board was um, it's one of only a few boards with three full-size slots. So two mining cards in here to start with. Then once they get some more money, they're going to put a higher-end card in slot one and move the two supers to these two slots. So it's like a hybrid mining slash work computer for them. All right, let's trial fit the... Oh, I still got a... Put all the mounting mechanisms and all that on this. So I'm probably not going to do that right now. Let's make sure it clears everything. That's about right there. Let's have a look. That heat plate covers the whole CPE. No interference. Yeah, it's pretty good. So, the question is, will fan number two fit? Pretty fit it there. I don't think, yeah, um, because I've got the same cooler in my computer, my desktop. I think I'd have a one, I had to put a 120 mil as the second one, because I didn't have enough clearance. SSO2 system with metal bearing shell. Oh yeah, that sticks up pretty high. May have to stick, uh, do what I did on my computer and put a 120. I think I'll put a 120 on this side. Yeah, that's going to be, um, RAM is in the way. Might actually clip on. It's just a question of whether um, there's enough clearance inside the case. But, um, I don't know if they're going to overclock this. I mean, that's still pretty decent having a 140 mil fan draw through that. I'm actually surprised I don't put some kind of ducting on it to direct the airflow through it better, to get more airflow over the fins themselves. But yeah, whatever. It comes comes down to cost these days, doesn't it? All right. So that's it for now. Let's uh, get that mounting thing put on the D15. All right, we're back. Next on the list is to install the D15. So we've got our accessories box. The LGA 1700. This looks identical to the old, old one, which didn't have 1700 support. Is it 1200 or 1700? Yeah, one of the two. Anyhow, I'm just going to have a look through this manual booklet and I'll be right back. Yes. No! So, uh, LGA 1700, 1200, and 11.5x is the same set of instructions. Yeah. Must have a very similar um, hole spacing. I've literally never looked at the spacing of anything apart from 11 5x, so. All right, let's get all the bits and bits together, get started. So, just opening one of the bags, accessories. So we've got a splitter. Get Clips for the extra fan. Look at that metal case badge. That's what you're paying 140 bucks for right there. The old NTH1 low noise adapter, which we're not going to use, and another low noise adapter. So plug them in for super low noise, super low airflow. Uh, right, so, what does it say we need? Four. Blue spaces for uh, 
uh, the seven. Is this LJ seventeen hundred? I can't even remember. Uh, where's the box gone? Uh, yeah, seventeen hundred. What was twelve hundred? So like tenth or eleventh gen or something. Kind of missed a generation. Kind of used built a few ninth gen machines because they were significantly cheaper when I built them for people. So we got, we got a metal thing, check hole position, those attached to the heat sink for memory, that's this chewing gum, okay, alright, I'm just going to get all this sorted out and I'll be right back. Alright, so the first part is, we've got to install these, so it says position 1, which is the inner part, is for the LGA 1200, or 11.5x 1700 goes on the out, outside part looks like a weird, oh, that's pretty cool looks like a triangular thing that can sit in another spot <laughs> how's that hold in there, it kind of just sits there uh, be careful It kind of holds in there well enough. So these are meant. This is meant to be the gold standard in CPU cooler attachment hardware, whatever you want to call it. The what do they call it? The it's written on here. Secure Firm Two. Sounds like some kind of security company. All right, and then we put these things. Oh yeah. That kind of stops that happening is what it's for. Looks like you get a couple of spares too. At least you break them. There we go. Now what do we do? We... So we've just done this. Attaching the back plate. Now you stick it over the caution. Supplied back plate will install over the motherboard stock back plate. So the motherboard stock back plate must not be taken off. Place the back plate on the rear side of the motherboard so the bolts protrude through the holes. Then install the mounting bars. Blah, 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 blah. Position two goes in the middle. Mounting bars. Oh, those things. No, it says. No. Caution. Be sure to make sure the correct hole position on both ends. Or they will be misaligned. Yes, that would make sense. Alright. Let's get all the accessories out of the way. essential case badge, make sure I don't lose that. I usually stick one of the case badges on the front, as long as it's not something lame, like, you know, someone pays $2,000 for a component, it's nice to have a sticker or a badge on there, I guess, but um, I only ever put one on the front. See the camera can see that all right. There you go. All right, now we put the blue spaces on, and we stick these things. And check the holes. Yes, the middle one. I don't know how you could get it. Can you even get it in the wrong spot? Let's try. <laughs> you can look at that. So 
that's on hole three and that's on number one. So they both have to go on number two. And the curvy bit goes on the outside. Yeah. Look at that, that capacitor, there's a capacitor under there, sitting on the metal plate. Jeez, it's like literally the right height. There's capacitors under here, they're the same height as those spacers, have a look. Oh, space is a little bit taller, fortunately. They obviously took into account this cooler, which is nice. Big ass cooler. Looks like it's not the right spot. Are you supposed to get that? Kind of goes where it wants to go. Ugh, that'll do. All right. Now it says no. Put the plastic spaces onto the bolts of the back plate and add the mounting bars. Yeah, I've done that. All right. Put the. Oh, there they are. That would be these guys. I wonder if I should put Loctite on this. Yeah. Yeah, it work. I end up using, um, I work on uh, varying machines that I'm not going to reveal on YouTube. And I end up just using. Uh, what's it called? Super glue is locked tight half the time. Does the job. All you need is anything in the thread to stop it from any glue, really. Just stops it from unlocking itself. Oh, there we go. They even get a screwdriver. <laughs> Tighten them up. Try to put the same amount of pressure. I do have a torque wrench, but it's like way overkill for this kind of stuff. I usually use the drill, so that's got a um, clutch on it. You can just step the numbers up until you feel that it's tight enough. I'm getting eaten by mosquitoes here. Lucky bastard things. I'm fly as well. <sighs> All right, I feel pretty good. Ah, oh, what the hell, I'll use my drill. Let's start off uh, eight. Well, that's tight. Okay, five. Six. All right, six is good. We get the same amount of pressure on every screw. All right, now I think we attach the bracket from memory to the cooler. Gently tighten the schools until they stop, but not do not use excessive force. Maximum torque 0.6 newton meters. Oh, I had number six on the drill. That's close enough, eh? <laughs> Applying thermal paste, oh yeah. Look at this. I've been applying thermal paste for 30 years. That pattern I do not agree with because about 10 years ago when I was working in a, no, it was longer than that. How long ago I was working in a computer shop? 18 years ago? We got a piece of glass and I said, look at the way it spreads when you do five dots and you get little air pockets in between the dots. And you don't want that because the idea is to have no air between the two surfaces. Because any air bubbles or pockets is not going to conduct heat, obviously. So I tend to do the big fat dot in the middle because as you push them together, 
it kind of displaces out sideways and covers, you know, like there's, there's no way for air to get trapped in there. So I prefer the dot in the middle or even a, a cross or a line, just something that's going to spread outwards as you push it down. It's doing this, when these two start to spread outwards, you're going to get little air pockets in between them. So even Cisco recommends that, but I, I don't know. I guess they know, maybe they know something I don't know. That's just my opinion. All right. So, oh yeah, now it's just a case of, oh, you gotta take the fan out to get to that screw. That's easy, just so unclip it from memory, yeah. There we go. Nice fans. Yeah, it's such a big heat sink. It's like freaking massive. <laughs> you actually got a, a cheap one of these off eBay and it was not the same. I don't know what was wrong with it, but it was very similar size. It's like a rip off of a D15, but it was nowhere near the performance. All right, let's get some thermal paste. No point opening the new one, just keep using the old one. This is a bit of a long processor, so I'll probably put a longish one on here. There you go. So that's how much I've put on. And I, mean, I do this at work for years and years and years. So you get used to just how much to apply. So that'll be, I prefer to put slightly too much because it does not matter. It just goes over the edge, you know, big deal. You're better off to have slightly too much and slightly not enough. So let's get this D15 mounted. I think it can go either way. Um, which way does the logo go? That way. People like to look at logos. Doesn't really matter. Ah, it goes that way. I thought it should go that way. But in the book, it said to put it... Hang on, let's go back here. Mm, orientation... Oh, there you go. Orientation A or B. Ah, uh, so yeah, you meant to put the bracket in a different way. <laughs> uh, I suppose I could put it that way. Because then it would blow the hot air upwards, and I'm probably more likely to have room on this side to put the second fan. Although, is the fan going to fit in the middle with the ram and stuff there? Oh, yeah, it should. All right, let's try it that way. I don't usually do it this way. That probably makes sense to vent upwards anyway, because that's where the two, on the case, the two uh, 140 mil fans are. All right, so we'll just uh, start to screw that up a little bit. Go to the other side. Bit of pressure on that. I'm going to use a proper screwdriver or drill. Let's use the drill. Just a big electric screwdriver. Just turn the clutch right down so I don't strip anything. One. Turn the clutch up. So number three on the clutch is good. Done. And the wiggle, yeah, it looks pretty good. Makes the uh, full-size ATX board look small though. <laughs> All right, rip jaws. Never used rip jaws before. Came as, I think I mentioned it earlier. Came as like a processor mainboard memory combo. You get fifty bucks off and. It's 50 bucks to spend somewhere else. Alright, where's the pitters down there? Put these down low. 
The only thing is, uh, these type of coolers, is, I've always thought it's good to have airflow over the, maybe that's why they're so big on this one. Because these type of coolers don't put the airflow down around the VRMs or the memory. I mean, you've got air movement, but it's still not, yeah, it's not as good. That said, my old Core 2 quad that I used for about nine years, and I probably, when did I get it, 2008? Can't go lower. Yeah, I might go a bit lower. Oh no, it's pretty evenly spaced here. Yeah, I think we'll leave it there. As long as it clears the case. It's pretty chunky. Not a chunky case, but I think that'll be a uh, easy old hand measurement. So about there. Ooh. Oh, that's going to be close. I may have to move that. Let's just move that fan down anyway. Just to save us having to do it later. Uh, bloody mosquitoes are attacking my legs. I've got like a mosquito plague here in South Australia at the moment. It doesn't vibrate or anything. That should be alright. A little bit crooked. And why do I go down that side? Oh, the screws. Let's see if we can get down a bit more. I don't like things that are uneven. That's the same height as the top of the heat pipes. So I think if that doesn't fit, we're going to have to get a different cooler. But I reckon that should be alright. Yeah, I reckon that just fit. <laughs> Hopefully. Otherwise I'll just uh, shave it down. You know, it's not like there's anything in the heat pipes or anything. So yeah, I was saying before about the VRMs. But then again, this is my computer that served me well for a number of years. That got a RAM cooler, got an Intel fan attached to a Sky 3 heat pipe cooler back when heat pipe cooler was first. Cooler. Yeah, that's a beast. <laughs> that's old Core 2 Quad. Uh, Core 2 Quad 9550. I used to overclock to like 3.4 on an EP45 mainboard. And it still works. Fine, I overclocked it for years and years. No calls on the VRMs, and the thing never missed a beat. Kind of feel bad getting rid of computers that have served me well. The old faithful, you know. See if you fan one. And yeah, fold that in there. out the way. Let's make sure it looks all nice and pretty because it's going to have a glass side. I don't think you get a case without a glass side these days. <laughs> Look at that. I just saw um, two SATA slots hidden down there. Oh, this is JUSB 4. It's like a strange looking USB connector. I uh, have to look in the manual. All right, so that's on. Now what do we do? So the video card will be there. Where's that other fan? Let's see how we go fitting that. Uh, yeah, let's put the fans facing each other. That's a good idea. <laughs> It's sitting on top of the heat sink, protruding quite a lot higher. What about this side? On this side, it's in the way of the video card slot. I mean, we could use those two, but that's 
good. So it looks like this will be a single fan setup, unfortunately. Spare 140mm fan or something. Uh, yeah. Unless we can take the 120mm fan out of the case, swap that with a 40 and then stick the 120 here. I had the same issue with my D15 on my desktop. I had to put a 120 on one side and a 140 in the middle. That still performed alright. Uh, tidy up a bit and um, probably at the point of putting it in the case all right I'll be right back all right, so we're back just took the uh, back cover off let's have a quick look at the everything in here look at that this this is a bit of a cheap case really so I wouldn't usually pick this case but it um, kind of suited all the needs that my friend wanted in a computer case. It's plastic, very cheap. Plasticky um, hard drive caddies. Let's take that off. Alright. USB. That's all the stuff on the main board. Alright, let's get the power supply in. So you have to have it so it's facing, the label's facing outwards so that people can see, whoa, you got a silver stone, if anyone cares. Uh, so the fan can face up or down, let's have it that way. Assembly. Yeah, how easy can we get to those? Should probably plug them in first. Damn, some chunky cables. This one's got like a that sort of power supply. Yeah, I think I might take this out actually. And motherboard, it's all upside down. I thought we put it that way. And the fan is drawing air from the top. We have the fan drawing air through, the, it's like a little filter magnet thing under there. Although what is my friend's likelihood of that she's actually going to clean it? Probably low, so maybe we will have the fan facing upward for the sanity of the power supply being able to actually breathe cool air. I might skip this bit, I'm just going to plug all the cables in, I'll be right back. Alright, so we've got the power supply in, showing off its label through the thing, and uh, I'm just going to set up the fans, two on the top, two on the front, and I thought I'd be able to put a 140mm fan there, but uh, no, it turns out, looks like it's limited to 120, which is a shame. So anyway, I'll get this done and I'll be right back. So um, just pop the front off, so we put the fans in, pretty annoying like, it's a cheap case, I mean, it was only like 60 bucks or something, but I can't complain too much, 
if anyway there it is so you got to pop that off and put pressure on all these wires just to take the filter out from the inside uh, it's probably better to vacuum it from the outside I guess so anyway you go the fans Putting fan number three in, two screws in, and I've noticed they don't even supply you with enough fan screws. Isn't that brilliant? It was really hard just to supply, like, you know, four more. I guess we've got the big bag of them that came with the fans, but they're silver. You're probably not going to notice it behind the grill anyway if they leave it on. It's probably better having that filter off. Anyway, let's get the fans fans in. Both fans up there. Pretty straightforward. Make sure they're not interfering with anything. So that should give a lot of should give pretty good airflow for the price we paid. Two 140s in, two 140s out. So the heat sink hair will be blowing up through there. Video cards will be getting some of this flow here. It's a shame there's not. I kind of miss them. They used to put fans here. Like my case has got it where you put a 92mm fan facing their video cards. Just to like that extra airflow there. Now they've put glass. It's like, show off the internals of your computer. <laughs> it used to be the, the opposite back when I was working computer shops. It's like, who wants to look at the inside of a computer? You know, now it's like the opposite. Anyway, I'm just going to put the phone down, work out where all the standoffs go, and put the board in. So I've just realised, without having a close look, I was like, where are the standoffs? I didn't realise they're actually up here, so I'm going to have to pull that fan, just one of the fans fortunately, out to get to the standoffs. So, out they come. Fans out again. Let's add a couple standoffs. Okay, just putting in the standoffs. And um, this has got that really thin sheet metal. I hate putting standoffs in this thin tin because you twist it just slightly too much and it rips the thread out. And then you got something that's useless for holding a on a main board. So uh, just looking at where the holes are, and it should line up. Yeah, two, that one stepped. One, two, one, two, one, two, 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 two. All right, let's get the main board in. So we got the board in. Uh, I've noticed there's not a lot of room up there for those fans. So I'm hoping they'll still fit, otherwise we may have to find a 120mm to fit in there. So, uh, alright, let's see if it fits. I love that, the uh, D15 just fits, like there's literally less than a centimetre clearance between the top of that heatsink and the case. It, uh, sometimes I make like little brackets to stable, take the weight off the socket, but I don't know, probably be alright. So, continuing on, it's a little bit hot in the shed this afternoon. It's like, oh yeah, almost 35 degrees. It's pretty hot. The old rig rigs are hashing away. Anyway, yesterday I noticed that the 140mm fan would not fit up in there. Well, it kind of fits, but then you can't. Oh, maybe you can. So some pretty strange positioning. Ah, uh, that heat sink still. Yeah. That big 
cool, oversized cooler for the VRMs that stops you sticking a 140mm in there unfortunately so we're going to have to put a 120mm in cables all tangled up untangled those so yeah this one will sit out the front clears the VRMs which are there yeah, there we go, screw holes line up uh, better than nothing so let's get them in actually I take that back because I realise that if I put that fan in I then cannot plug the uh, CPU power cable in which is conveniently located back there so uh, let's get the uh, power cables in I guess alright, connectors just managed to fit those in there I'd use a screwdriver, hook them into place, and then push them with a blunt tool until they're connected. Runs along there. Would have liked like a hole in the corner with cables come behind it, but uh, it is what it is. Plug that in. Be good if there was another one of these there, but oh well. It doesn't have to be overly pretty as long as it works. All right, let's get those fans in. Alright, so that's the fans in. 120 and 140. Now let's uh should probably put the video cards in at some point. Uh, the video cards are where is it? This 1660 super and another super that's actually in there that I've sold my friend. I'm just gonna mine them on these, so uh yeah, I'm actually going to move that 3070 on this rig into that, uh, but that's got not to do with, it's not got anything to do with this build, so we'll uh, do a different video on that, I think. Alright, so I got the uh, fan wiring all in and kind of half tidy. It's kind of ugly, those coloured wires, but oh well. So yeah, fans are all plugged in. This fan's plugged in here. Two front fans plugged in down here. So now we've got all these to plug in. So let's get them in. All right, so all the cables are in. Relatively tidy. So now next up, put in the two video cards. So that's one card in there. And let's get the other one. And there's card number one, a 1660 Super. It recently had its thermal pads replaced, and apart from just a very light dust off, perfectly fine. Yeah, two video cards in. Nice. There we go, she's pretty much finished. Oh, all the hardware's in there. Underpowered video cards, but you know, they're not gaming and they're not doing anything graphically intensive. They just want to do some mining. So they're pr probably going to move up to better cards in the future, but you know, 1660 Supers are a pretty good starting card for mining. So anyway, let's uh, get Windows on. Alrighty, just finishing up the build now. So uh, Windows is all installed and uh, put a couple of stickers on there and I'm just putting the final sticker on so I don't know if I should put up the top or down the bottom. We'll put up the top. A little trick I do with the stickers since as long as I've been doing this is um, line it up on the corner of a blade and then push it down and then peel it off the blade so that way you can get it lined up nice and straight. So I'm going to finish that, put the side on and switch it on. Well, it's already been switched on, but um, I have to copy the mining software over to it that I've already prepared and uh, give it a test.
I was reading the ma motherboard manual today too, and I found out what that little switch does. You can't probably see. It turns on the lighting for the motherboard. Which done absolutely nothing. Yeah, that's where if I could just uh, power it off, power it on again. Oh, it's another thing I do, set up the fan profiles. Make them quite aggressive because they're going to be mining on it. Uh, that's pretty colours there. Uh, it, said, it said the switch turns the lights on the mainboard itself on and off. Uh, I probably have to install that app as well. Yeah, anyway. Alright, and she's finished. The only thing uh, I don't like is the glass doesn't sit flush with the rest of the case. So that's pretty poor. Oh uh, well, is what it is. So anyway, let's fit, set the fan speeds up and uh, we're done. So just setting the bias up. I'm not setting up, just finish setting it up. Oh uh, yeah. So unselect it, select it. Bit of an unusual bias. Easy mood. OC profile, no. Hardware. Beta runner. This is, here we go. Fart, smart, fan mode. System loss. Two, three, four. Okay, there's their um. We got one, two, three, four, five fans. One, two, three, four. Ah, uh, one of them's piggybacked off the other. What's that? Warning: System fan might behave abnormally if you set fan speed below forty percent. Uh, that's still up there. What's this smart fan move? Oh yeah. 50 degrees. I'm guessing that's the speed. It's a pretty poor chart. It doesn't show you the... RPM over here. <laughs> 50. 13,500 RPM. I don't think so. 85, 8.4 volt. Yeah, that brings it to a... Oh, I see. So on the left-hand side, it's voltage. On the bottom is the temperature. Okay. So we'll say there. There. I can't go higher than that. Oh, I guess 12 is 12. Mm. Uh, next fan. Smart fan mood. Just drag these up. Yeah. All full speed. That's pretty cool. Set default. It's probably not a bad idea for summer actually. All full speed. Yeah, anyway, I see how see how they go some basic settings and we have to turn it up later so be it what's this give it a try beta runner oh, I'm not going to touch that if we break something <sighs> system status is that the date yes that is not the time though three I don't even know what the time is here's the time Nine thirty-five. Nine thirty-five. 
um, <laughs> so one drive out of all those. It's pretty good. It's got four M2 slots. And why do, why would you want that many uh, M.2 drives? I think two would probably be enough. TMI information. I even use that. I use that at work. DMI for uh, so the software can identify the hardware configuration. And we have PC. This M2 Max Link. Oh, cool. Well, the GPUs only run Gen 3, so we're in Gen 3. PCI latency, buff 4G, cryptocurrency mining. We got enabled. <laughs> this has more vast support disabled. Um, save, 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 save. I hate these funky biases. What's that? F12. Let's get back. Boots. La 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 la. Security. And does this even have a TPM? Yeah. It said in the manual it was like an add on module. TPM2 device found, but I couldn't see an add-on module, so it must be integrated on the board. Huh, <laughs> that's alright. I suppose now with Windows 11, everything's going to come out with a um, TPM chip. Or TPM2, anyway. Booting up. Boot up. Pretty quick this thing. Well, I'd say it's not lightning fast compared to my 8086K, but I'm sure actually using that processor to its full potential is significantly better. Hey, what's that? What the fuck is that? Uh, I think a cable or something is rubbing against the fan. Anyway, you can get in there and have a quick look. All right, so I actually found out it was the one of the front fans brushing against that middle pole. So I just gently bent it forward, and um, it still does it, but you have to push it quite a bit. So just lightly tapping it before made it hit. That's all right now. Jeez, that's not, not the best design. Fan runs so close to that middle. I think I might bend it a little bit further. Alright, that's better now. There you go. Jeez, that's pretty poor though. Like I said, this Cool Master stuff's not the best quality. I typically avoid it unless I need to. So anyway, we get it reassembled and that's going to be it. I'll uh, catch you next video.